Hi, so I've been playing around with a few different oil painting techniques, um, mainly to try and streamline the process of getting the design onto board or canvas, however we're going to actually um, do whatever we're going to do the finished painting on. So I thought I'd put this short video together just to show you what I've been up to. Uh, some of you may find it interesting, it may give some of you ideas of your own. Um, so as I say, this is a design done in Photoshop, um, just freehand painted using the Photoshop brushes. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see there's the layers palette. Uh, there's a lot of layers in this. I just need um, a flattened image. Um, I could just flatten the image. But if I want to keep those layers intact for future editing, then another way of doing it would be Command A and select the whole canvas and then go to edit, copy merged, and then paste. And there's a, a combined image, a layer with all the visible layers combined into one that I can work on. So what I want to do is get Photoshop to turn this into a line drawing initially. Um, so the way that you do that is go to filters, stylize, find edges. Uh, Photoshop does its best. Um, there's some colour information in there, so I desaturate the whole image because I don't need that colour information. So in the time honoured way, this is one I prepared earlier. Um, I've added some, I've increased the contrast, added some bits that Photoshop missed out, like the edge of that cliff, uh, other bits and pieces. These images require sometimes a lot of work, sometimes not very much. It all depends uh, on the nature of the initial image. The other thing I thought I would do this time is paint on a tinted background rather than a white background. I could have put that in with a brush on the final thing, but for this instance, because I'm going to print this out, um, I created a multiplier layer, filled it with orange, and thereby tinted the uh, the image orange. And I printed it onto oil or acrylic paper. This is paper, um, but it has a kind of canvasy texture. It's designed for painting on with acrylics or oils. It um, gives quite a nice surface to paint on it. Um, it's quite absorbent because I'm using water mixable oils. Um, the, the oils will act like watercolours sometimes. Um, so that is quite nice. The downside to it is that um, the surface is not very robust. So if I find myself scraping paint away or making alterations, I can destroy that surface. So to create a more durable surface, something more like working on a canvas, I've been sticking them down onto um, a substrate of some kind. So in this case, it's hardboard. Um, and I've painted um, that surface with transparent uh, gesso, acrylic transparent gesso, and place the print on there. I'm trying to get the uh, edges down. I pay particular attention to the edges because I know in the past, um, if you don't, the edges can lift and that means that you're having to do more work further down the line. Anyway, to get this completely flat, what I do is put a piece of hardboard, another piece of hardboard on the top of that, and then get a pile of books and put those on the top. So leave that for about half an hour, um, take the books off and lift the, the hardboard. And you'll see that it's gone down really well. It's beautiful flat surface. Um, and again, I could paint directly onto this, but the idea is to create this robust surface that I'm looking for. So I'm painting this with more of the transparent acrylic gesso. Um, it looks a bit milky at this point, but it does dry completely transparent and matte. Um, it, you end up with a really nice surface. Um, there's tooth from the acrylic paper, uh, but there's also a bit of tooth from the gesso that I'm painting on with a brush. So yeah, it, it does grip the paint quite nicely. So here's the finished thing. I've trimmed the hardboard. It's on the easel ready to paint. You can see it's a beautiful, transparent, flat colour. I should have said that I actually spray the print with fixative uh, when I print it out. That seems to be enough to stop the ink lifting when I paint on it. Um, which is surprised me actually that it worked, but it does seem to work quite well. So I'm starting to paint here. Um, I always put the blacks in first which just helps me to judge what the other tones should be. Um, normally, this would be a white surface. Um, that would give me the lightest highlights, the blacks and the whites, obviously. Um, but the orange is acting as a mid-tone, so I had to think about this slightly differently to the way I would normally paint it. 
Um, the black here is a mixture of um, ultramarine, burnt sienna and a bit of crimson to, to warm it up because the shadow side of this ship would be picking up light from the desert environment that it sat in. So it would be slightly warmer than the top part, which is when it's going to have blue sky eventually. So there would be cooler colours up at the top there. So I've got masking tape around this uh, image, um, which you know, I'll peel off at the end to give me a nice clean edge. It's also quite useful to uh, test colours out. You can test them out next to the pigment that you put in on the uh, on the board. And so it gives you an idea of what that is actually going to look like uh, when you put the two together. So I started to paint the sky in. This is a cerulean blue, which is a much cooler, colder blue than the ultramarine and is much more like um, a much more convincing sky colour, in my opinion. Um, I'm not trying to obliterate uh, the orange. I'm leaving holes in it so that you get bits of the orange shining through. Obviously, orange is complementary to this blue. Uh, and it just gives a more interesting surface. It looks blue, but it's a livelier surface than if the whole thing was um, just painted. You know, if I completely obliterated the colour underneath. I start to paint these planets in um, after kind of various methods of trying to do this to get perfect circles. Um, I've just come to the conclusion that it, the easiest way is just to paint to the edges uh, very carefully. Um, I can, with practice, you can actually get a pretty round shape. It doesn't matter if it's not absolutely perfectly circular in this instance because I'm aiming for a looser look. I'm not trying to get the highly finished crisp edges that I used to get in the old days when I might mask this off with frisk film or some other mask and then spray the, the background in. Um, as long as it's not egg shaped or there's a big lump on one side of it, um, it is generally round, it works quite well. Uh, painted the top part of the shipping at this point with white um, so that now gives me the lightest tones uh, in the image. Uh, and again I've um, let the orange shine through just to make the uh, painted surface a little bit more interesting. Um, start to paint these cliffs in uh, under colour. I'm aiming for a very dusty, hazy kind of look. Um, and again, you know, allowing the underpainted to shine through. So the other advantage of allowing the orange colour to shine through is that it gives the picture a uh, homogeneity, it knits it all together in a way that sometimes you don't get if you paint onto a white board. The colours can be too clean and separate. Um, but having the underpainting kind of it's baked into the process. So I turn my attention to the whatever this thing is, drilling rig, refueling station, something along those lines that the ship is trying to attach itself to. I'm trying to keep um, the tones fairly not too dark because uh, I do want it to kind of melt in to, to the background to give it a, that kind of hazy look that I'm after. Um, I'm also trying to uh, get a, a, a glare effect from the sun so the sky is lighter behind those paddle things that stick up from the top of the ship. So the composition, the design of uh, the picture, the idea is that your eye travels along the platform at the bottom and picks up the hazy edge of that distant cliff which takes your eye to the wingtip and then onto the fuselage and to the left to that darkest area at the front of the ship which is the area of highest contrast in the picture and the focal point and then your eye travels down that dark spike back to the platform so it's kind of a, a nice circular composition which takes your eye around the scene. I'm Try not to use marl sticks or any other kind of aids when I'm putting this first uh, blocking in section because I'm after a, an impressionistic look. Um, although when I've got it all in, I will um, probably uh, use a marl stick just to tidy some edges up. Um, just putting some highlights on this platform in the foreground there, uh, try and give the impression of light just catching that edge sticking out from beyond the ship. So this is the finished thing. It took me about a day to paint altogether. The biggest addition is grey stripes. I think they lend some credibility to the form. 
the brain sees the light grey tone turn into a dark grey and immediately reads it as the front plane of a crafting shadow. I've also added more light blue to the glare to the right of those paddles. They cast shadows from right to left so the sun should be more to the right. I've toned down some of the shadows in that area to add to that glare effect. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some ideas of your own that you might play with. If you did like it, please click the like button below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.